Back now, the winter initiation season is set to begin, and this year, Gauteng, Tswane, and Western municipalities will be hosting initiation schools. That's after a year's suspension, with the commission citing criminality and unfavorable conditions for initiates among a number of concerns. So for more on this, I'm joined in studio now by Lebohang Maile, Gauteng MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Thanks a lot for joining us on Newsnight this evening. Thank you very much for having me, and good evening to the viewers at home. Let's talk about the decision to actually lift the suspension. I know that the winter period is, is upon us when it comes to initiation schools. A lot is to be said about what happens in the safety around initiation schools themselves. But from what we understand is that you've put measures in place that actually say that the province is ready to even host and to actually execute uh, these uh, customary initiations. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, the CRL took a decision here before last. I think mm. it's 2017 that there shouldn't be activities uh, in the year 2018 mm. because there were unfortunate incidents that took place in 2017. So they um, mandated us or rather instructed us to ensure that we put measures in place to ensure that when the, um, the initiation process uh, resume uh, this year, we should be in a place uh, to, I mean, in a position to can uh, protect the initiates and we have undertaken that process, we have worked with municipalities, we have satisfied ourselves that the city of Tswani and the, city, the municipality of West Rent and their local municipalities, which is Rent West, Mirafong, Mukhali, uh, are ready to um, but, um, roll out the process and they have, What uh, is that process? What does that process look like practically? And I'm just taking it and this is a conversation you and I were yes. having off air that you know it's one thing to put processes mm. and policies in place mm. but it's another thing to convince a 13 year old boy who's being bullied no. because he's not viewed as a man yeah. and he wants to go to an initiation school to prove his manhood mm. and then he finds himself in a situation as we can see in the back of us mm. and on the screen the way they end up in hospital mm. and in many cases unfortunately they end up dead so what practicalities have been put in place the first thing is that uh, municipalities must promulgate bylaws the second thing is that they must uh, and as part of those bylaws identify places where this initiation must take place but the third thing is to ensure that those places are hygienic uh, there is water there is sanitation the fifth thing is to ensure that they work with the uh, Department of Health so that there is a, a screening process uh, before the potential initiates can be uh, taken in to check if there is no potential medical complications. And they must also report uh, constantly to the provincial uh, government. And they must make sure that they also monitor those. And we have set up a task team to monitor the implementation, as you correctly say, that uh, to have laws, it's one thing, but to implement them effectively, it's another. That's why we're not leaving that uh, anything to chance. You, we've got the Department of, of Health, mm. we've got the Department of Social Development as the custodian of uh, children, we've got the Department of um, Community Safety, we've got the police, we've got uh, traditional leaders, and the Department of COCTA as a a steering committee or rather a committee that is responsible for overseeing uh, this uh, initiation And process. then how does that then filter down to the community member? How does that filter down to the father in the household who wants to take their son to an initiation school but they don't necessarily know because what ends up happening, again, these reports you've seen, which is the reason why it was suspended in the first place, is that um, the bogus initiation yeah. schools will come to the very same parents and ask and say to them, you need to send your child here and then automatically they respond to that thousands of rands are being put to it yeah. their children's lives are being uh, you know put at danger so what communication is there for the parents number one um, to ensure that they do send their kids to the right initiation schools but also to the children themselves as I said before unfortunately the incidents that led to the suspension was because a lot of the initiates because of bullying because mm -hmm. of pressure they themselves were not even telling their parents that they were going to initiation schools and all of a sudden the children were found even missing in some instances yeah I think the awareness program uh, it's something that is continuous. It's not just uh, taking place uh, on the eve of the initiation process. But secondly, that is why now we have issued a statement uh, to alert the communities uh, that the process has started. And those that are confused and they don't know what to do, where to get the information, they should go to their municipalities. And that is why we have said so far it's only the city of Tswani and the 
the municipalities that I've mentioned earlier on, Mohali City, Rand West, uh, Mirafong, the Western District Municipality, that um, have been accredited and the provincial government is satisfied that they are ready and they'll be able to help our people so that people don't just go uh, to any other person. So they must go to the local claims. municipalities exactly. first and find that information from there and there is a database Absolutely. of those initiations. Absolutely, please. but they can also go to their traditional leaders, those who are in the uh, who are living in um, um, areas where there's traditional leaders and they will certainly help them because we are working with traditional leaders as well. MEC, thanks a lot for joining it's us. A pleasure. And uh, I know that it's a very, uh, 